We'll start streaming it.
Good evening, friends. I'm extremely happy to know that St. Lucia's Evening College is organizing a webinar with very eminent cinema personalities on the theme loneliness and solitude in cinema. All human beings experience existential loneliness. And we are continuously on a search to be filled and fulfilled. The challenge for us is to move from loneliness to solitude. Those who are filled and operate from the inner center of their lives experience solitude. Those who operate from only their egos experience in the end loneliness. And they look for popularity positions, possessions, pleasure only, they experience ultimately loneliness. I hope that this webinar will be an enlightening experience for all of you. And may we not only move from loneliness to solitude, but also to greater friendships, relationships, solidarity, and growing humanity. Thank you. St. Aloysius uh, Evening College is known in this region for its education to the poorest of the students, especially the students who are working. And they bring them together and uh, bridge them together and give them a new direction. Now we are in the time of uh, COVID-19, the pandemic. It has struck all of us. There's so much of uh, uncertainty and fear gripping all of us and all of our lives. At this time, St. Elvis College, uh, along with its IQAC and uh, Department of Languages and the Sanchi Foundation has come up with a very good webinar with the theme, Loneliness and Solitude in Cinema. I think these times of uh, difficulties and the times in cinema are actually bridging together to give us this wonderful theme and they have come out with this beautiful theme to enlighten us at this time to remain in solitude and also building from social distancing to social solidarity. I thank and congratulate the Department of Languages and St. Elvis Evening College and the Sachi Foundation. And I wish all the participants all the best. Thank you. God bless us all. Esteemed guests, resource persons, and all participants in our online audience. We are about to begin a very important international webinar by the IQAC, Department of Languages, Indolucious Evening College, and Sanji Foundation, Bengaluru, on a very contextual theme, loneliness and solitude in films. Good evening to all of you. At the very outset, I deem it a privilege to extend a warm welcome on behalf of the organizers to Sri Girish Kasrabadi and Sri Anil Zankar, who have carved a special niche for themselves in their chosen field, cinema. We are extremely fortunate to have Sri Abhayasimha, a distinguished Alosian and an extremely young director and film writer with us this evening to moderate the session. I welcome you, sir. We also have with us Sri Ismail NAM and Sri Omshu Prakash, founders of Sanji Foundation with us, will help us to conduct the webinar with their technical expertise. We welcome you into our midst. Cinema has always had a powerful impact on life and there is no doubt that it has a crucial role to play in the unique situation we find ourselves in due to the COVID pandemic. 
I'm sure that this webinar will help us to understand this through the inputs of our Erudite speakers. Before I end my welcome address, I welcome all our dear participants to this webinar and wish all of you a pleasant and informative experience. Thank you. Hello, everyone. So welcome everybody to the webinar on uh, loneliness and solitude in cinema. Uh, cinema as an art form has always been conceived as a art form, which has to be consumed uh, in a, as a social uh, experience. But today we are in a special case where uh, the cinema has been consumed through uh, mobile phones or television sets or computers or laptop. But interestingly, the cinema makers or the authors of cinema or the directors of film have also been uh, dealing with this loneliness and solitude in various ways through their cinema. So we are here to discuss about these two ideas, uh, film as a medium of communi uh, community experience or, and also the authors of cinema uh, creating, creating content on solitude and loneliness. So we have uh, two uh, guests, uh, distinguished guests, uh, Sri Girish Kasravalli, uh, who sort of inspired me to become a filmmaker, and uh, Sri Anil Zankar from Mumbai, uh, who taught me cinema. So I'm, I'm in, uh, amongst two legendaries in this panel. So I welcome uh, Sri Girish Kasravalli, sir, and Sri Anil Zankar uh, to this uh, webinar. And I welcome all the audience uh, who are uh, with us through Zoom app and through YouTube and uh, Facebook of Sanchi Foundation and St. Olicious Evening College. So I welcome uh, Sri Anil Zankar to give his uh, opening remarks on this idea. Yeah, can you, can you hear me? Ah. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for being present sure, here. Uh, yes, uh, can all of you hear me? If, uh, can you confirm? Yes, okay, fine, thank you. So, uh, Abha has already spoken about the theme. Now, uh, this may seem like a very large kind of a theme. I mean, loneliness, solitude, there are shades, you know, of various things. This is an experience that uh, filmmakers over the years have always created. Now, why has this become a, one of the very popular and one of the very enduring themes uh, in film? Uh, the reason is very obvious because uh, various films in various ways reflect their own societies. And uh, in that context, I think it is important to see that how loneliness abides in various forms in different societies. The very fact that uh, we get such a wide uh, uh, representation and depiction of loneliness or solitude in variety of films. I mean, it's not only contemporary film, but even in period films or in Various ways you find people are lonely or people are dealing with their solitudes and uh, things like that in films. So there are, uh, I mean, it's a large topic. Some people have also written uh, books on the theme of loneliness uh, in cinema, actually. Uh, we, of course, have limited time and all these things. So we'll pertain ourselves to understanding the issue in the present uh, circumstances, I feel. Uh, I'll just come back to what Abaya began with. I mean, he said that cinema has always been a social medium, it was born as such. And from there we traveled for in about uh, 120 years now that the cinema has been in existence that you can stream it on your little gadgets, whether it's like a mobile phone or whether it's like a tab or your laptop. Now the tab, laptop, television, initially it came to television, now it has come to even miniaturize. But uh, the experience has all of you admit that the point doesn't need to be even argued, but all of you uh, would agree that you know the experience isn't quite the same when you see it in a mobile or even at the home when you see it in a collectively and when you know the whole atmosphere builds up of cinema theaters where you're there with others discussing feeling it together when uh, sort of you get angry or when you want to laugh or you know when you find something ridiculous you find that there are you're surrounded by people who are also having very similar feelings you know which is what builds up one of the things that builds up social communication, and I think a sense of uh, community online. Now, when you're watching in your own space, uh, the same film, it's not quite the same experience. It's directly uh, 
focused kind of interview. It's like almost like being in a tunnel. You know, you have you, <clears throat> sorry, you and the artwork in front of you. So it's like a tunnel, and rest of the things are shut out. Now, when you go to theatre, mind you, that's also a tunnel. But uh, the tunnel is populated with a lot of people like you. So it becomes a community experience. Now, when you're in your own space, it could be one o'clock in the night, it could be early morning, it could be whatever time, you know, and the world around exists. And you're still within that, you are uh, watching or you're trying to watch a film. Sometimes like a book, you know, we don't read it from end to end. You stop, take a break. So that's also happened. So that's actually uh, how uh, you consume or you receive a film, which are originally meant for theatrical uh, the presentation. So that has its own thing. I mean, for instance, uh, the quality of the picture or the quality of the sound isn't quite same on laptop. And it's even worse when it comes to our resolution of picture or optical quality, say on your mobile. And uh, you, know, uh, you know the score actually. So that is one aspect of social aspect of the medium. Now, the other aspect we'll be talking about is the content. And, uh, you know, as I said earlier, and again, return to that, is that why does this remain as an abiding film? Because loneliness, somehow or the other, uh, seems to have become a very enduring human experience in various ways in various societies. And that's why I think artists are drawn to it. And that's why we also are, you know, drawn to it as audiences. So with this, I think... Uh, We'll open it up to various other these things, but I would like to take the benefit of having one of our very foremost filmmakers, Mr. Girish Kasavalli. And uh, I would like to start uh, with a few questions to him, basically, because uh, you all are familiar with his films. Uh, he's been a very prolific filmmaker. Uh, he's been making different and difficult films when it has always been difficult uh, to do so. And he's somebody who's actually stuck to his strength and developed within that, that is, he firmly believes in being an Indian language filmmaker. I avoid the word regional, but I call him as an Indian language filmmaker. And uh, he, this is how he places himself within the uh, Canada society, Canada speaking people, Canada speaking world. Uh, all his themes and other things are drawn from there, but not limited to that. It transcends the experience, of course. So many of his uh, films or many of his characters uh, represent or uh, sort of uh, show these uh, sort of qualities. So uh, instead of zeroing on one particular character before that, I would like to welcome Girish. And I have a question for uh, Girish actually, is that uh, have you thought about, because Girish, one of the things that we've seen in a number of your films is that a lot of your films have old people as protagonists. You know, that's one thing I would like to uh, begin with because uh, there are very, very few filmmakers. In fact, I can't think of any other filmmaker in India in uh, half your films maybe, or more or thereabouts. The majors or the protagonists are always people who are old or you know, must pass their prime or you know, even uh, uh, older in that. So even though the stories are different, you've done adaptations of different writers, this is one thing that seems to, or the characters seem to recur in your film. Uh, can you tell us more about it? How do you see the old age and old people? Uh, why do they populate your films in such an important way? Yes, Girish, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Please uh, go ahead. Yeah. Did you get the question? Yeah, yeah, I got the question. Okay, fine. Thank you, Anil, for... Uh, uh, for this uh, one, I would like to, before I begin, I would like to thank Dr. Aloysius College, Sanchi Foundation and Abhay Sinma for organizing this uh, seminar at a time when the whole world is affected by this pandemic. We are all stuck in our own rooms, we are in a way all isolated. And this is a time, it's a need to introspect on what is this isolation, what is this solitude, how did the human uh, race affect got affected by this. You know, <clears throat> human species as such is basically a social being. We need to, we need to have some uh, support from our side, we need to interact, we need to uh, talk to each other. But this pandemic has put an end to all these things. And in this time, we, it's appropriate that we 
look at our own cinemas and you know how it has addressed these questions and uh, there are many reasons why hello uh, there are very reason, many reasons why we get isolated the reasons being you know it could be ethnic reasons or it could be reasons related to racial discriminations it could be geographical reasons and it could be political reasons why certain group of people get isolated certain individuals get so marginalized and there are the films which talk about discrimination and isolation on gender level sometimes you know natural uh, disasters can isolate people and also in when it comes to india you know we also have to discuss caste and class structure of the society which make brings in this discrimination and uh, by looking at these films what we can gather is that the way how the characters in that particular film have how the individuals have the how the human being addressed and withstood this uh, isolation and how did they without crumbling try to establish their own identity so this is uh, how i would like to discuss this uh, uh, how, uh, how would like to take it in this discussion you asked me this question about the old age being one of the theme in my film in most of the, some of my films wherein i look at the age old age as one area where people get isolated and it's very uh, while i'm making these films and i get very disturbed because this is one factor in our life you know where people get isolated people are pushed to corner people are uh, ignored and uh, uh, the people you know till that point who had uh, some kind of a respect and this they get marginalized i have addressed this questions in many many films you know like tabarna kathi i have addressed this Kravurya was basically about a old woman who finds it very difficult to uh, find meaning in life, and uh, of course the latest being the poor Mahatara, where again you know an old man uh, who is totally devoted to his work, is infused with some new ideas, and then you know how he goes about uh, seeking certain solutions, and then finally how he is isolated in. that is due in terms of ideology so uh, this is one thing i have is running in all my films and uh, when it say very you know that uh, state that at this age at uh, when we are old when people are old the people their own uh, friends their own community people their own uh, the followers ignore them and that creates a kind of a painful experience and i want to document it and through that i also would like to highlight how these characters could withstand them how did why did how did they avoid getting crumbled under these pressures yes and it so it's also uh, in in many of your films what i see is uh, also uh, the sort of a distress of a urban landscape like when you deal with any urban subjects then you are little uh, you are talking about loneliness in urban spaces when you talk about uh, rural spaces or then you are not talking about that much yeah uh, see uh, in rural space things are slightly different in fact uh, their isolation happens because of the distance because you know, they are they don't live as community especially in some of the films which i some of the subjects which i did people are uh, in uh, villages in they live in isolated space whereas in urban in town and cities they live in the cluster of houses here the isolation is created because of the interpersonal relationship they is created because of the because of the uh, the, uh, the environment and the location itself so questions are truly really different here they uh, i am talking about so now we get dehumanized whereas in um, 
film like film like dwipa they get isolated because of the physical condition of the space yeah anil sir can you uh, yeah. elaborate yeah. 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 yes i'm to be is right but for instance if you see the story of I mean, claudia there's an old woman who stays in a village you know and in a family that itself is a hamlet and a very small kind of thing and then finally you know it's like uh, she's abandoned here are you passed on from hand to hand and abandoned finally you know that's uh, one of the things but there are uh, other and what other factors that i wanted to talk about is that one of the things that kirish in your films you talk about uh, the other you mentioned right. some of the reasons like the some of the reasons like uh, racial geographic oh, right. uh, economic reasons are also very strong because you know one second one area uprootment for instance one second uh, let's like talk about that a little bit because you know people being uprooted people being sort of uh, asked to move on or, or the gender issues i mean in gulabi talkies we see a lot of this and so one second Yeah, I think uh, Girish sir just uh, came in. One second. Yes. Uh, no, I think Girish. Yeah. Uh, Girish sir. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Can I hear you now? We can hear you now. So, Gary, uh, shall we take the question? Uh, Anil sir, I think Gary uh, sir's uh, hello facing some uh, internet issue. Uh, Anil sir, can you give us some historical uh, perspective to this? No, I was just uh, talking to Gary. I mean, for instance, the, some of the I was just adding to the points that he he mentioned about this. He mentioned about Racial, geographical, and political reasons. To which uh, I want to say, gender is also a very strong theme. And I was referring to two of his films, uh, two of his later films, which is uh, Hasina and uh, Gulabi Talkies, which again, uh, you know, take place and talk about uh, very gender uh, issues, which are uh, caused there, and the responses of the individuals there. Both these women actually fight, you know, against the although the they are faced against uh, initially uh, a family husband and then the community the whole weight weighing on them is very very strong and very very massive you know it's a very unequal fight but still they fight so i wanted girish to actually elaborate on uh, these two protagonists and their situations girish can you hear me i think he lost the connection okay uh, yeah so I mean, you... those who not may not have seen those uh, films uh, by the time we have girish i'll just briefly repeat the question but uh, when it comes back yeah, but uh, sir in the meanwhile can you give us some historical sense uh, in terms of i think uh, last time i remember you speaking about uh, these things historically about isolation historically isolation no there are various uh, well as i said that uh, yes i think girish is back yeah i think you can ask can you hear me uh, hello girish can you hear me yeah i can hear you ah. so i'll just repeat the question because i think uh, we just lost you when i was asking the question uh -huh. uh, you mentioned various factors to which i'll just briefly add gender and these yeah. two protagonists you know uh, asina and gulabi talkies i would want you to talk to them about two because they initially the problem start as a gender issues with within the family and then as they enlarge the you know the whole patriarchal society actually the weight of the society and then the community comes to bear on them you know starting with as an individual fight and both of them resist actually they do not you know kind of give up in their own sort of way so how did because this was this films came uh, in your career at a particular point hmm. you know it's about if you taking your career from 77 to about midpoint uh, of your career you suddenly had these two films you know one after another so how did this transition occur how do you see this uh, we'd like to elaborate on that Yeah, in fact, I dealt with this thing even before Hasina. Uh, I had made two other films. Uh, I had made one film earlier, not one, uh, two other films which deal with the same theme, Taisa Heba and Dweepa. Both talk about 
isolation in the, in the, in, in through because of the gender you know inequality equality inequality See, in thai sahib also she becomes very lonely because papa sahib hasn't uh, given a importance to her and she is totally confined within the water and in dweepa in fact she puts in lots of effort to save her family but the husband and the, her father in law are not ready to acknowledge that so i discuss that i deal with that in from different perspective there whereas in uh, hasina i directly talk about this kind of gender discrimination not only about that is accorded on to hasina but also her husband discards her because she has given begetting only female children so that way i uh, try to address the kind of mindset that we have in our society wherein we give more importance to the male a uh, uh, member of the family than the female you know, member of the family so through that we are trying to project the problem that is there in the within the society and we are also trying to say how the women which stand that how they try to overcome that how they try to establish their own identity right and uh, this we see even in other uh, in some of the major works uh, world over you know, like the one which charlotte also thinks the same thing so this is this charlotte this is a little bit the same thing you know, charlotte is totally totally ignored by book of the husband but charlotte tries to carve out a small niche for herself with her bro- brother in law and who initiates her into write to write poetry and things like that so <clears throat> through this films we can understand how the isolated paper how the isolation has an curb they has an made them um, go into the pool right yeah. right but uh, yeah in fact uh, i just want the uh, i just want to uh, take this further because uh, like you mentioned in case of say tai sahib or character in charlotte or the main character they come from very privileged background even though right. they have problems as women but still they have means to you know kind of go around it but whereas i come back to say somebody like hasin house has been this and she's like a uh, working class uh, yeah he's an auto driver woman and the husband is a rickshaw driver and gulabi talk is you know yeah. husband is being married then uh, she's like yeah. a big wife in the village so they are obviously in a completely disadvantaged position you know and yet they sort race and so and then moreover you link them up to a larger uh, things as compared to your earlier things you are going more along the cultural and more along the familial lines where you place the community where you place the characters now in these two films particularly you seeing them in a larger political canvas you know there is a lot of suggestion of that i mean taisaba you enter also with the economic issues you know and the fishermen the trawlers coming in so what made you open up the narratives if i may say so at okay. well when i was when I, when i was working on the script of gulabi uh, taki i not only talk about individual i also want to talk about community i want to also want to talk about the whole uh, society as such in fact uh, the isolation uh, gulabi ta case is at many levels at one level gulabi is isolated on caste basis on community basis. she she is she belongs to muslim community so she is isolated and she is isolated from her own family because she hasn't she couldn't be a son so the her husband has abandoned her and my got married again she is not like by the villagers uh, the uh, people of the island because she belongs to another community it's only through uh, you know uh, uh, television this one they people you know women in the village come to her and then the uh, there is also a society outside community outside fisherman community they are isolated because of the economic reasons you know because now the trading has shifted from fishermen to bigger boats and things like that and then you have the isolation because of the larger government policies so that way i try to understand the dilemma of globi and the dilemma of the society dilemma of the community fishermen community and the muslim community. and uh, i widen the perspective because for me all these are interconnected interrelated or one is the mirror reflection of the other or one is probably an enlarged 
or shorten vision of the bigger problem. That's how I did the whole film, uh, whole, uh, uh, that's how I wrote the whole script, you know, Gulabi Talking. Wherein I talk about the isolation of Gulabi, isolation of the fishermen, then the isolation of the community, mm -hmm. Muslim community, and also isolation of the, on, on the trade practices, of fishing, fishing trade practices. Okay. Uh, can I ask you about uh, other other Indian filmmakers, uh, also yeah. non-Indian, but I uh, would prefer to say this to Indian as much as possible. You made uh, a documentary on uh, Adur Gopal Krishna. Uh, yeah. Now, uh, some of Adur Gopal Krishna's particularly two films, uh, uh, yeah. which I think we talk about quite often. Mm -hmm. uh, first is the main character in Mukha Mukha. You know, right. I mean, it's a complete transformation. He has been a communist activist who goes underground, you know, in Kerala and then when he returns to life, he's lost his speech, he's lost his articulation. And in fact, Satyat Lai had mentioned this in an interview. He said that I'm quite flummoxed by the fact that after the interval, the protagonist doesn't say a word. <laughs> so how do you see this particular thing? I mean, you know, because it's got to come with a straight strong political background, the character is a part of that, and then, you know, this is what the transformation occurs uh, within him. It's a very complex film. Mukamukam of Adur Gopal Krishnan is a very complex film, and, and I'm very favorite of mine. Actually, I wanted to talk about that also, when we come to the individual. Here, the protagonist Sridharan, we can read the uh, film in many ways. In one way, we can take uh, take it as take it as a you know a failed communist leader. In another uh, uh, interpretation, one could say, did Sridharan was Sridharan a really a trade union or it is imposed on him? This identity of trade leader, leader of a trade union, was it his choice that it was imposed on? Him? If it is imposed on her, naturally he becomes isolated. And I can read the film in two perspectives, from these two perspectives. And I, I, first, I'd like to read it as, you know, a failed trade union leader. Sridharan very effectively leads it, you know, uh, strike for some 15, 20 days. And he has, everybody looks upon himself, at, the, at him as a great trade union leader. And then one fine day, he suddenly disappears and resurfaces after a long gap of 10 years. And when he resurfaces, you don't see any trace of that trade unionism or, uh, or even the leadership quality are, are at all in him. Now he's, he looks like a, he's drunk. He's drunk all the time. He doesn't speak to anyone. He has no energy within himself. What has, might have happened that 10 years what, what had happened in that 10 years which has caused him to become an isolated man like this? That's one way of understanding, you know, interpreting it. The other way, as I told you, is was Sridharan a, really a uh, trade union leader or the trade union leadership was imposed on him? If it is imposed on him, then we can see, we can interpret the film in a different way. There also we understand the isolation of the man, why he is. So why why he remains a silent man? So this way, it talks about the man and his own image. The, the the big discrepancy between the man and his image, and that has brought in a lot of anguish on the person Sri Dharma. and that is actually what is what makes him so lonely and so what prefers to remain in solitude. And uh, so if you look at it as a metaphor, then probably we, we can interpret the whole political scenario of the left movement in India. Yes, Abhay, you want, you want to say something. Abhay? Sir, um, uh, we have been dealing with this uh, sort of political and uh, social, uh, sociological uh, constraint, which sort of makes uh, human being Isol, uh, you know, lonely or uh, isolated. At the same time, you know, I, I think I have a question here from Ranjan Sham. How much has Indian cinema explored uh, loneliness that comes due to stigma of unknown illness? We, you know, there are not many films which talk about, uh, you know, challenges of, of mental illness or, you know. Mm. 
Anil sir or Girish sir, anybody can. I, I can't think of anything immediately which has been doing with the, the illness which causes isolation. One of the things which is one uh, ailment which I always refer to is uh, the white patch in the same people think it is a disease and they avoid you know, they don't take them as a in the community. Otherwise, uh, 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 there are other uh, uh, issues which make individual and isolated. If you take illness as metaphor, as Susan Sontag says, it, then uh, social, uh, uh, sorry, caste discrimination, class discrimination also can be taken as illness, you see. Right? Yeah. Uh, race, so, 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 Sadhgati is one good example. Uh, most of Canada new cinema, we can pick up, you know, examples from that. But uh, there are certain small details in uh, in a film directed by Sai Paranjapai, in which Manasudin Shah acts as a handicapped person. You're talking about Sparsh? Ah, uh, Sparsh, yes. Sparsh. Sparsh. It deals with such thing. Pardon? And uh, Nasir's interpretation of the character is very, very significant. He tries to establish his persona. And right through the film, he has that kind of a self-esteem. And which Nasir uh, Nishab brings out very effectively. And uh, that film has, I think, uh, if you refer to the illness as my letter, probably here is, the, here is one case. And then probably you will be able to hear in a Better question to, to be. Yeah, I have a few more questions. I mean, somebody suggested Megeta Katara. Of course, yes, Megeta Katara will come to that. But since we are on Adur, we spoke, you've spoken so much about uh, <coughs> this one. The second film, which is again, he takes the idea even further, is Matirukul, The Wall. Yeah. You know, I mean, these are two, this is again uh, Bashir's story. Now, there are two prisoners, one is a freedom fighter, and across the wall, there's a man and woman and who actually fall in love, a man and woman who not seen each other. And they just exchange. I mean, there, it's just the voice which is, you know, going across the wall uh, over there to break the kind of isolation in that pattern. It's the most extraordinary kind of a setting uh, for a story to be in, you know, during the moment. And two people who not seen each other continue to have a dialogue and have a kind of a, I mean, develop what you may call as an intimacy, you know. So it's a very unusual situation. How do you see Actually. Yeah, the, <clears throat> the title of the film itself is, uh, you know, uh, kind of a metaphor for the whole, you know, this one. Like, it's just the wall, the Madhivikal. And uh, as you rightly pointed out, the man never meets the man. But it is a longing to have a kind of a sexual relationship with someone, which Adur Gopakrishnan very effectively brings out through, in a very suggestive way through throwing the tree or through conversing across the uh, wall without looking at him, looking at the character, looking at her. Uh, so, uh, is it, is the, see, there again, you know, it's, you can interpret it two different ways. Is it his imagination or is the women real? Because, because of isolation, is he imagining a woman? a woman or the woman does it does the woman really exist and if you get a different meaning if you have this alternative and that alternative if you think that is an imagination then you end up with another one there is a he's a poet he's isolated he's put in the prison and so he starts imagining things so that's one answer to come back Isolation. Open up your imagination, and and then you start imagining things, and that's how you keep your healthy mind healthy. Second is, if it is real, then it takes a different uh, approach altogether. He is longing, longing to hear a voice of a woman and then the moment he sees it, he doesn't want to get 
released from the jail, jail from the jail so that shows another twist to the uh, brings twist to the narrative and in both cases we see how isolation has affected the poet the freedom fighter and how he is imagining and how he is not willing to go out because that freedom is different from the kind of freedom he is enjoying here now we are also we can also discuss on very several like there are uh, characters in indian cinema which are caught in a time rap war they get stuck i can think of two major wars wherein we get the isolation because of it one is sachitra jalshaga another is renal sins kandaha and it you would like yeah, to i was uh, i was going to ask you about that since you come to that point also megade kata later on yeah. jalshaga yeah, definitely you can start with jalshaga no no even uh, uh, kandahar of renal sins hmm. that would uh, mother played by geeta sen she has had some traumatic life before she went blind so she starts imagining and for me you know when we are talk- talking about this particular issue solitude and isolation because she, she can't in- see things she starts imagining she this five character four characters come from city she thinks you know one of them is her daughter's boyfriend so her mind, mind becomes fertile she is physically disabled because of the disease she can't see she is bedridden but her mind is fertile she starts imagining things and uh, in fact you know that becomes a kind of a answer to isolation also you know you keep your mind fresh you keep your imaginary power to imagination for that and jashakar of course it's uh, the zamindar there is caught up in a while you know time or the sick times have changed this zamindar is going down he is totally broke and he doesn't have finance but the outside the man was working here before now he is become a very successful uh, entrepreneur that creates a kind of a tension between is exactly opposite of uh, kandaha where she you know widens her imagination here he goes into a cocoon becomes a tragic figure with a fact right and it yeah uh, now megadeka tara because in megadeka tara she is right in the heart of living life she is you know very famous example she is completely shouldering one after the more and more responsibility she is in fact the falcon around which the family you know build up their progress growth and everything and yet you know being so involved so energetic you know towards the end the entire loneliness you know kind of uh, you know over there so if you like to talk about the right uh, go ahead go ahead no would you like to uh, elaborate on that is what i'm asking the tragedy of uh, neeta i think the name of the yeah character. so played by supriya see there her brother her mother her younger sister they all use her and that makes her more and more lonely she wants to she wants to uh, she wants every member of the family to prosper but in that process she becomes more and more lonely her boyfriend ab- ab- uh, abandons her the only person in the film who sympathizes with her is her father who all the time wants to read uh, you know poetry and get, he wants to get lost in the poetry you know, uh, and arts for it and that way the the isolation of protagonist is a comment on how selfish the human being become at such situations in such a situation and uh, when we are talking about uh, isolation i think we should also broaden our reach and 
put to international cinema i can uh, i would like to talk about two uh, films both from japan one is island of the shigahara sorry no, shindo shindo and women of the dunes by the shigahara it's very fast if you see this film women of the dune it operates at many as a isolation works on many levels here is an entomologist who gets lost in a desert looking for a uh, uh, some species of butterfly and he wants to see, spend his night somewhere and he can't find any hotels or any human being so finally this an aboriginal uh, uh, group and he meets them and they take him to a house which is owned by a lady and that is inside a dune they drop him inside and they never pull him out and because of this you see two kinds of thing you know uh, many many it's multi layered the film is multi layered because now their uh, population is dwindling so they want somebody to you know make her uh, make that but you know central main but the uh, protagonist pregnant so that she begets children and their community and there is this man who is very selfish at the beginning then fly because of the isolation he starts reflecting upon the existence of the, this community and realizes how being a uh, from city he realizes how selfish they were and he really decides to stay back here in one kind of isolation the protagonist the entomologist realizes how how uh, uh, this one he they are schematic they are schemy they are selfish they are on the other hand we also come to know how this small tribal group is you know their numbers are decreasing they want uh, you know uh, somebody to live with them women so the filmmaker using this metaphor talks about the mood using the metaphor of tune uh, talks about the need for you know kind kind of community uh, relations the other film which i was referring to is kenneth chido's uh, island the yeah. island which probably can be read in many levels it's like myth of sisyphus you know sisyphus the, they are living in a very dry island they have to you know go across the river you have to fetch water in that process i mean so all this difficulty is they still be and the fi- the film celebrates their courage and their decision to stay isolated and uh, in a, a, a not stay isolated they are isolated but they don't give up hope so that's why i say the whole film is about you know lifting water to the top the dry uh, hilly island it's a kind of a sisyphus myth you know they are retold in the contemporary uh, society contemporary time and they celebrate the unfailing uh, uh, vision of the human spirit Uh, sir um, when we talk about loneliness and solitude uh, one of course uh, as a so, uh, loneliness as a person mm-hmm. a single human being but as a species human being we are also sort of looking for interplanetary life and uh, looking for life other than also, earth yeah. many films deal about that also i think it is a part of existential uh, loneliness also mm-hmm. can you elaborate on that uh, uh, i don't think i have seen much films uh, Talk about such issues. So probably Anil will be able to throw some light on that. Anil? Yeah, uh, sci-fi. He's talking about the realm of sci-fi. Uh, <clears throat> unfortunately, uh, if that is what he's referring to, yeah. sci-fi most of the time the whole theme is about you know conquer and it's about a lot of this is very ego satisfaction and going and colonizing the space etc. Particularly the Hollywood films etc. You know, so I don't think this really forms. 
within the ambit of uh, you know extension of uh, life. Now, Girish, uh, since we're on talking on Japanese cinema, let me just come back to the most famous Japanese filmmaker, that Kurosawa. Uh, some of Kurosawa's characters, main, Kurosawa's main characters, for instance, in Seven Samurai, the older samurai, the oldest samurai, the battle veteran. Uh, you know, at the end of the film, they say after all that they've taken over, I mean, Seven Samurai is a very prototype kind of a plot, which has been, you know, used films, Magnificent Seven, Shole, everywhere, you know, samurai. But then, Unlike our heroes, uh, the samurai heroes of Kurosawa are completely detached. Even though involved in the most blazing action, there is a certain sense of detachment and loneliness that uh, we find in that. Because at the end of uh, Seven Samurai, the old, this two old person, he looks at it and he says that all that has happened, bandits have been killed, you know, this has been saved and all that. And he says some of us colleagues have been, and we two are the only ones who remain, you know, as usual. And uh, also there's this samurai creed and some of his major characters. For instance, Mifune again in uh, uh, Yojimbo. You know, he comes, walks into a situation, just makes the situation his own, cleans up the entire mess, you know, and then he just goes off like a cowboy riding off into the sunset. You know, no family, no attachments, no earthly kind of things. So there is a certain kind of a loneliness that defies, defines uh, some of his major characters. Would you like to uh, react to that? Uh, <clears throat> in uh, you know this controversy about uh, Seven Samurai. When uh, um, uh, Kurosawa released this film, he, both the group, the former group as well as the samurai group, attacked him, saying that you know they are not. He is not sympathetic to that. Uh, samurai said, you know, uh, uh, former group said, uh, you know, uh, Kurosawa is more sympathetic to samurai, and samurai group said that he is more sympathetic to farmers. But how I read is something different. He says, you know, is neither of them that Kurosawa is trying to say how the one group is using the other, which is actually the theme of Yojumba as well. We, in order to safeguard our interest, we use individuals. Here, we use, they use samurai. Samurai use the farmers. So uh, that way, he is talking about the main, uh, the uh, human, uh, no, the nature of the human being as such, and how we become so self-centered, and how we become skinny. <coughs> But probably it may not come under this uh, theme. But there are other films, you know, where you can directly talk about it. And do you remember this film? Which one? Il Postino. Which one? Sorry? Il, Il Postino. The, ah, post yes, the Postman. Yes. Postman. postman. See, there, the solitude, the writer, Pablo Neruda, oh, no, no. the solitude, solitude, because he wants to get away from this system and uh, create something in solitude. And uh, we are all this time talking about isolation, but here is an, uh, you know, you know, where you know, voluntarily he goes for solitude. And uh, the film talks about that. Would you like to talk about that? The film, if you remember that. Which postman, yeah. That, since you're talking about the isolation of the intellectuals, the film that immediately comes to mind, and again in Latin America, is uh, Memories of Underdevelopment. Ah, right. Yeah, also... Antagonistic to the society. I mean, that communist revolution is given up, all his property is there. He doesn't think that, you know, he cannot go back. He doesn't be, think that his future lies in USA. But he's at variance with a lot of things which are going on. He's not a part of that. And the entire film, or the novel, the story, is uh, shown from his personal viewpoint, you know, the reaction of that. So, uh, so would you like to elaborate on that? And this is also what the background of the uh, Bay of Pigs, the missile crisis, you know, between USA and USSR. And this whole island came caught in the crossfire. So all those references are there in that particular film. Yeah, well, since we are talking about the isolation because of the political structure, there are quite a few films which deal with the Second World War and how many people get isolated, especially the artists and the individual. 
films that come to my mind immediately is one is Mephisto, Zabos Mephisto, the artist who gets isolated in the end. Very, very painful thing. The other film which comes to my mind is Andre Vida's After Image, where the, the painter Siminski is, uh, is isolated and he dies without you know, being able to get his daily coupon, food coupon, because ideology is mm. Because his ideology is quite different from the ideology of the So that's another major issue, you know, where the human society as such creates the isolation. So you have many such films, you know, stories during the Second World War. And uh, just because of class, just because of us race, just because of this ideology, people are isolated. They are, they are, they are made to stay uh, you know, isolated and weaken their, not only the, the weaken their uh, strength, but also weaken their, their uh, this one itself, the you know, identity. Mephisto talks about it, and there's a Chinese, beautiful Chinese film called uh, uh, Farewell, Farewell My Concubine. That's very interesting day, you know, I think it it's becomes very important for us to see that film again and again. How the change in social, you know, political structure isolates man. So, so one, when the uh, culture revolution was happening, that man was the artist was taken as a hero, and when after the Cultural Revolution, during Mao era, he's taken as villain, then again he's taken as hero. So the identity is imposed, and is and they make him you know, lonely. Very painful. Uh, one needs to understand that. You know, one needs to understand how the political climate makes people, you know, isolate people and makes them suffer. That, uh, let's go to Hollywood. We haven't spoken about Hollywood. Yeah. Uh, the most prominent... Yeah, most of Hollywood is very limited, so you can go ahead. Yes, but yeah, I mean, there, I, actually, there aren't too many films to talk about, but the two which prominently come uh, to mind. One is where most people would have been familiar with is by Martin Scorsese's Taxi Driver. Taxi Driver, yes. And the second is Pawn Broker, which is Sidney Lumet's old film, black and white film. With Rod Steiger, you know, he's uh, which very few people would have seen about it, but uh, people have seen this. But let's talk about uh, Taxi Driver, played by you know Robert De Niro, very very yeah. colorful character, uh, you know, and in that it's, the whole film is about the loneliness, the way it's written, also you know, the character of the person written and moving to violence. Why I brought in Hollywood is that inevitably, I mean, if you read the uh, the script which is available online. The writer says Travis Bickle is the name of the character. He's an ex-Vietnam veteran. And he says he can't sleep at night. So when he arrives at the taxi pool station, he says, give me a night beauty. You know, and then in a very cosmopolitan city like New York, he comes across various samples of human beings and throughout, you know, the man is coming unhinged. And the uh, character note on the script, the writer has said that, you know, just as the sun moves, you know, towards the west, Travis is inevitably moving towards the violence, you know, so there's a very, very definite direction to his life where it, you know, kind of erupts and the way the film was shown because uh, in India, we like to quite often have this, you know, the hostility, the character we show, but it's shown differently from uh, by causes it. And for instance, in Hindi films, quite often the character coming, you know, he hates the city. It's almost like a norm. We seldom have a positive depiction of city environment in our films, mainstream films, you know. Particularly. And uh, so would you like to uh, talk about uh, Taxi Driver? I don't remember much uh, uh, details about uh, Taxi Driver. But since we are talking about isolation, we also, you know, the isolation of the successful film, uh, successful person. And how do they uh, become isolated? And, and that's, I think, uh, something which we need to understand. Because we are all only thinking, you know, because of the pandemic, we are all isolated. And they, uh, kind of a uh, confinement which uh, makes us uh, suffer. But even a successful man, 
successful individual, successful woman, can also be very isolated. I take, I have not seen uh, some of the films which talk about Indian politicians, like say for example, Gandhi. Does it talk about this kind of isolation wherein you know, the success itself make them caged? I know one international film that is Wild Strawberries of Ingmar Bergman. Yes. Where a very successful college uh, professor was going to be given lifetime, you know, uh, for his lifetime achievement, a honorary director, uh, honorary doctorate. On his way, he suddenly goes back into his uh, Wild Strawberries. Bar and suddenly realizes he's, he was a total failure in his life. I am very sure, you know, if you really look at it, look at some of the very successful popular cinema made in India and then in other places. We see. No, so actually in India, it's a bit of a problem to take a very, you see, we have had a lot of things for many years, for actually, for decades, in fact, we never had uh, films on historical personality, you know, biographical films. And I think uh, when Richard Attenborough met Gandhi, then after that, a spate of those films started. Then we have now a film on Ambedkar, we have a film on, uh, uh, I mean, the, the part thing, which, uh, I mean, we have a film on Sardar Patel, we have a film on Ambedkar, you know, and a uh, few more. But in India, normally, uh, these people are given, are presented as icons. You know, we are not yet to a stage where, you know, even we could of the filmmaker could sort of dare uh, to do that. And I don't blame filmmakers because the pressures are too many. You know, the, there's already these are very big icons. So if you try to even move a little, deviate a little bit more and talk about uh, other aspects of it, the, only the public aspect of their lives, you know, is what uh, is to be supposed to be forefront. You know, so that's why we don't really get uh, ambiguity. The public figures or the strong leaders or the great leaders are sort of devoid of ambiguity. You know, they are all very definite, very kind of cut out. We stereotype them, basically. You know, the isolation in Kaga, uh, Kagaz Kepur can be taken up, I think. Yes, but that's a fiction. I'm talking about the biography ah, of no, but, but, uh, Yeah, there actually he's a very successful man, but then it's isolated. Oh, yes, that, of course. And also now, uh, also when you talk about the Sagar, one thing that came to mind was the Side Bibi or Gulam, you know, Nana Kumari's character. I mean, there's again a very privileged, and in fact, uh, there's a dialogue in the film where the husband says, when she complains at a particular point, you know, the, uh, her husband says that, Ki, what is your uh, work, you know? So, gane banwa, gane he said that you are an upper class woman. All that you can do is, you know, if you're fed up with your ornaments, you know, just make, uh, break them and make them anew. That's what your life is all about. You know, not to ask uh, uh, people, etc. That's put very blankly by this uh, zamindar at that particular point. So we do have those kind of uh, vignettes, you know, as in that. Or if you take, uh, say, taxi driver of uh, Chetan Army, you know, the film in the 50s. Mm -hmm. And in that particular film, it's very, very realistic about Bombay and when the norm at that time, those days was to shoot in the studio. A lot of this film is to... And in the title, it interestingly says that, I mean, all the great titles, finally it says, and the city of Mumbai, you know. And uh, the man plays the taxi driver and all these subaltern people, shifted people, that is what this world is all about. You know, <clears throat> the entire isolation and the fact, also Kalabaza, part of that film. Again, that whole Devanan, black and white Kalabaza. You know, the whole money and how it kind of uh, dominates and, existence and daily fights with BST and all those characters the films really start with. So there is some attempt at a particular point in the 50s to put the character in hostility, you know, with the city. What generates uh, this sort of a theme uh, as compared to that, you know, the uprootment person is able to, I mean, he is, finds that is, he comes from, like you said, in the villages, you know, normally people belong to a community, everybody knows everyone, and suddenly you are come into a large city where nobody has time for you, nobody, you know, kind of you have to make, find your way and you have no choice. You just are made, forced in a sense to, you know, adopt to the way you go of the city. Nobody is going to make any adjustments for you. Nobody is going to give you a kind of a consideration. You know, so this adaptation problem and these hands that you miss, you miss your cultural festivals, you miss this thing. So that's how also in mainstream films, you see, you see if the characters say from Bihar is this thing, you'll have scenes like Holi or you'll have 
scenes, you know, where people somehow can sort of relate to the cultural festivals or occasions, they come in, into the story, you know, so that the audience at some level uh, could identify with that. That is the way we treat, but it, again, in mainstream films, we really don't take a character and go deep uh, into that. In fact, very rarely uh, do films do that. There are some films there. So that too, answer. Abhay, should we go on like this or... Uh... Can we get uh, it's about an hour now that we... No, I think uh, I have some question uh, okay. from the audience. So I'll uh, invite Subhash. <clears throat> um, Subhash. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, thank you, Abhay. Uh, good evening, sir. Um, I have a question on the other aspect of uh, isolation and uh, loneliness in cinema. So uh, you, we have been discussing the uh, isolation and loneliness within the uh, story or uh, of the characters. So I'm talking about uh, the uh, loneliness as uh, as a viewer, all right? So uh, we mentioned cinema as a social experience, but for many like me, uh, it's not a social experience, but a, a deeply personal experience or or a meditative experience in which, uh, you know, if I like the content, I would like... Uh, to have complete focus uh, on the content without the distractions uh, that the normal theater experience offers, right? So uh, that 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 is one as uh, aspect. And many fe festivals have gone online during this pandemic, and there there are discussions about uh, bringing in technology like uh, virtual reality uh, 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 and and all that to uh, make up uh, for the loss of theater experience. How do you view that uh, uh, change? And also, what is your view on uh, film festivals uh, becoming more popular uh, in the online format? But like many more people are viewing those uh, films as opposed to the physical festival. Uh, let me answer you the first question. Actually, when we go to theater, we watch the film as a community. But the real experience is actually personal. My, I, by looking at the film, the, the, the emotions that is generated is purely my personal. Sometimes the community reaction enhances it, but uh, very often, you know, many a times, when they laugh, I wonder is that the reason to, is it a thing to be laughed at? Should be introspect. So that way, Though it's a community uh, viewing, but the experience is purely individual, purely personal. So watching it separate, uh, for me it's not a problem at all because I watch films on my computer and separately in my own theatre. Uh, but this whole process is actually the because of the Hollywood propaganda. Uh, it's a Hollywood which said, cinema I said, mass entertainment media. Because they couldn't compete with a you know, French film or they couldn't compete with other smaller uh, uh, industry like Poland and things like that. So they say it's a mass entertainment so one must cater to a or just possible and only English could do it. Not Polish or not uh, German. So that's a kind of a propaganda which Hollywood yeah. Pardon? I have some. So that's the first question. Second one, I am very happy that it goes online because sitting in Bangalore or sitting in somewhere, you know, one could watch the international. You don't have to go to festivals. Uh, one, one probably uh, one, one might be able to go to one festival or the two festivals, but there are thousands of festivals all over the world. And you may not get all great films in one festival. So if you all the, you know, there are many festivals which are online. Because I get from the, well, right now, you know, there's an online festival going on. Everybody they're doing an online festival and there are many other uh, you know, forums which are making the online festival. And a uh, lot of people are watching it. Like, you know, yesterday, uh, my, my, the, my retrospect is on, on FFSI. A lot of people are watching my films, which otherwise wouldn't have been watching. And they're all old films, they're not new films. 
so that way i keep watching uh, i get you know passwords from various people so i keep watching what is happening in the asian cinema what is happening in the european cinema what is happening in the contemporary indian cinema i get to know so i would welcome this uh, change this development thank you sir thank you yep there's another question from uh, unni vijayan uh, unni vijayan you yeah yeah uh good evening girish sir good evening sir. Yeah. so uh, thank you abhay uh, girish sir i have a, a question on this uh, your films we as we know and and as you also talked about that there's so much of isolation and solitude in the characters but then they are all within a group you know either family or a society and basically they get isolated within the crowd you know that is how but slowly i may i i wanted to have you ever reconsider that you would also have a um, kind of a, a film with a landscape which ha- which is physically also isolated i'm i'm asking this now because it has become pertinent now with the pandemic and as we go ahead from here would we also see a visual change in the way we are looking at you know the screen you know the, the num the people would we ever see society at you know together or is it going to be very isolated visually isolated human beings uh i have actually made two films one on the isolation of the community which is babita ki one uh, isolation in terms of geographical space which is transcendent to the writing the scaling of riding the standing of dreams you know which is totally isolated uh, but there are quite a few filmmakers who are talking about you know such isolation i don't know whether you have seen a film called uh, lady of the lake by pavan sir you know sharma pavan kumar sharma pavan kumar sharma manipuri film which talks about uh, a very isolated community and their struggle to survive in the when the, the multinationals are trying to take over the you know uh, lakes and the people living in the lakes sir they are living in the in the lake not on the land they are living in the boats and they are struggling to uh, save their like, you know space their uh, so there you know the film talks about the individual as well as the community and how this community is pitched against the multinationals and the other forces so like there are many such people you know films that are being i don't know whether i have answered your question am i uh, yeah 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 sir uh, i i was also uh, curious to know how would you, you know uh, as you uh, the next film that would you think of and uh, go ahead with, would it change the way you are going to yeah let me think about visualize it. yeah visualize a film Can I come in for a minute, a brief yeah. while? Yeah, come. Huh? Yeah, I mean, ah, this is what this gentleman just said to the you know, like the audience is shrunk, and you the questions that nobody knows the answer. Well, you know, when will life return to normal as you know it existed before pandemic? Ah, uh, well, the in the experience of the Spanish flu, which was about exactly hundred years ago. After that, it was noticed that the uh once it was like normalized and social life resumed as before uh the audiences in cinema theaters the numbers went up you know that was one of the things that happened after the uh, of course the world war 1 had also ended you know so both these very traumatic events had ended and the audience actually returned to the theater of course there's a qualitative difference now audiences don't have to go to the theater you know to watch a film you can do that into that so i think as long as the need for the narrative is there to watch us in various forms and that curiosity uh this will continue you know maybe it's a small segment which stays see the talk but uh people would perhaps return to the uh screen you know because cinema they, they, they will definitely return to the screen the social as a social experience that would remain this is what again we can we can only speculate at this time but this is one of my uh, speculations now when and what will happen and this new forms of course will continue parallelly so maybe a new kind of normalcy would uh, appear but when that would be is anybody's guess uh thank you uh, unni sir uh, 
there's another question I, I would like to take. Uh, Ranjan Sham. <coughs> yeah, please go ahead. Uh, unmute, unmute yourself. Anybody is speaking? Can't hear anyone speaking. <coughs> yes, is uh, anyone asking a question? I'm sorry, I'm not getting any sound. Now, now we don't hear him. He's speaking, but I think he hasn't unmuted his... Uh... Yeah, one, sec one second, I'm... Uh... Oh, because it's absolutely blank. Didn't yeah. hear. No, no. Oh, one second. Uh, Ranjan Sham, can you ask your question now? We can't hear you, Ranjan. Ask him to unmute, maybe. Yeah, he's unmuted himself, but uh, still there's no input. Uh, Pradeep Kumar, are you uh, here? He had a question. Pradeep. Hello. 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 Yeah, Pradeep. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, this is a question for uh, Girish Kasar. Uh, uh, Kasar, sir, Kannada Dali, uh, we have a lot of Dalit literature and narrative. I think uh, Karnataka is one of the fertile land after uh, uh, after Maharashtra in, in the quantity of uh, the little literature but as far as uh, your uh, cinema filmography is concerned you you know uh, did not made a film on uh, the little issue and narrative right uh, in the same adur gopal krishnan i don't want to uh, discuss much about uh, adur gopal krishnan uh, it is also said that uh, in your case and uh, adur case uh, that uh, uh, you know you did not uh, touched uh, the Dalit narrative very much consciously. What is your response uh, for this? It may be you may be you know uh, dealt uh, caste issue with uh, with you know, with with your certain films, but uh, as far as uh, being one of the greatest filmmaker from Karnataka and even from India, um, you know it is you know some people are uh, you know remarking that you know you did not touch it uh, very much consciously. So what is your response? It's not true to say that I didn't touch it because uh, my film Kansamba Kudra deals with that. It's actually a, a Dalit narrative and also uh, the third dream is a kind of a very metaphorical dream. It's a kind of a uh, uh, synthesis of actual uh, reality as well as the dream. But I won't be able to make a film like, say, Foundry, because I, that's music, basically, you know, they have experienced it, so it comes out so yet, actually. It, with all that still, you know, we have made a film called Choman Adhubi, which they basically talks about such issues. And it's not true to say that we have not talked at all. I may not have made film about uh, many films about such issues, but I have made films... Uh, on the little issue called uh, Kansem Bakudre, I made uh, films on Muslim issues and Hasina uh, and Gulabi uh, Jockeys and on middle class, you know, uh, marginalized section people like Tavarna uh, Kathe. But uh, <coughs> it, uh, we need to ask a basic question. Can we, pres can we give prescription to the filmmaker saying that you make films on this or you make films on that? <laughs> One can only make films on subject which haunts him very much, which uh, in which he has some kind of a, a you know uh, in, uh, is insight. There are many such cases like Barban never talked about such a thing. He always reminded. That, that, that's what I was trying to say. Kurosawa never talked about other issues of Japan. Or for example, Ozu only talked about middle class, you know, father and daughter relationship. So this can be applied to anyone. It can be applied to Ray also. Ray hasn't made many you know, films about Dalit. The only exception is probably 
Sadhguru, which is not that successful as it is, and it can, you can, I can take any number of examples wherein you know uh, they have not issued touch that issue, touch this issue. Not only that issue, can also talk about communal harmony. You can talk about various other things. You can talk about labor. That's one thing which I have never dealt with, you know, like the labor issues. Various other reasons, of course. One is uh, probably I didn't find that come across a story which talks about uh, labor issues, but also there are other issues, you know, how to shoot it, where to shoot it, and these kind of problems. Right? It's uh, not right on uh, anybody's part to give prescription to the filmmaker. All that we can do is by looking at the film, we can say whether he has been able to grasp things in a clear perspective or not. What do you say, Anil? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, absolutely. This is, you know, I mean, there's a group which comes and says that this is the political agenda, you know, so are you one of us or not or conform? Which I think is one of the unfortunate follow-up of this activism in, you know, like trying to impose ideas on this thing. I don't think anybody should ask because... <laughs> you know, no, just a minute. Ultimately, what, a filmmaker would make how many? You know, most prolific filmmaker would make 30, 40 films in his life. So, in 30, 40 films, the topics that he would have dealt with, there are more topics in the world that he would not have dealt with. So, this question can be asked of anybody, you know, any filmmaker. Why haven't you done on this? Why haven't you done on this? And in fact, even for after writing a lot of novels, also the same question could be asked of a, a, a writer. You know? So, that really doesn't uh, make sense. I mean, you take a person's work and put it in the context. So that is open to criticism. That is open to your interpretation. That is fine. And everybody has a right to talk about it. But being prescriptive or asking people to make films, you know, and why haven't you done that? And why haven't you done that? I don't think uh, that's a very valid question, basically. Uh, yeah. Um, I'll just, I think uh, we are about time. So I'll just take one last question. If that's all right with both of you. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, Sri Lata, K. Sri Lata, are you here? Please go ahead and ask your question. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening. Just go on, please. Sir, it's my pleasure to be here with you all, sir. So, one, my question to Girish Kasravali, sir. Sir, uh, actually, we are observing a lot of change in the film industry. So maybe the story, the plot, the themes, the music, everything, sir. So uh, I, what I believe is, so if you compare the old films and the recent films, there is a lot of change, right? Uh, like, you know, the morals, so which have come down to a drastic level, to my knowledge, sir. So can we expect, so something change after this pandemic? Is it possible? the isolation and uh, you know, the solitude, will it bring some change among the people so who love to watch the films in a different manner? So, yeah, this is my question. Thank you. Do you expect a change in the filmmaker or in the audience? Both, sir. <laughs> audience. Actually, you know, it is vice versa. Generally, what the filmmakers say is because the audience want this kind of films, they are making it. And what the audience say is, because they are producing such films, we are watching it. Yeah, so this is what is happening. Kind of, kind right? of, I'm sorry if I'm wrong, right? There's so, a kind of interdependence which we can't deny. Yeah. But, yeah so. uh, see, I don't belong to that group which says, you know, audience want it, so I'm making it. Yeah, of course, I I'm know, sir. I have watched several oh, films of you. Yeah, nobody so. has come to me. With a letter saying that please make big films on these such subjects. Yes, yeah, like, sir. I'm going to make you. Subject, uh, films on subjects which affect me, which disturb me, which uh, I think is important to be. Okay. Then, uh, okay. When you say you we talk change in the in this one, what we are talking to talking is about the technical changes, but cinema is not merely technical. Cinema is actually an experience. And how do we create the generate that experience is something which we have to bother. One can make films without moving the camera. One can make films without, you know, all the extra wagons or heavy uh, digital sound, uh, DTS and all that. 
So finally, what matters in a film is the experience. How experiential a film is. We often confuse this with the technique. We very often say, you know, this man is using ultra modern technique. So what? To what gain? To what end? There are filmmakers in you know in the world history where where people like Bresson, people like you know uh, quite a few of them who use basic minimum uh, equipment and make a great work. So even choice of technique and choice of idiom is filmmakers derogatory, and he is trying to reach out to audience using that because he wants to reach out to audience on a different plane or two. So we need to understand that the filmmaker is not only trying to tell a story, he's also trying to tell a story in, a, in such a way so that we get a different perspective about this issue that he is dealing with. I mean, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, this is one point which I, I mean, the last point that I would like to perhaps end here. Uh, the question earlier that point was raised about you know the uh, online festivals. I think that's a very very welcome thing because recently FSI Federation Film Societies of India had one festival. Now your this thing is going on. Uh, I got to see some very uh, films which wouldn't have been otherwise very easy for me to see. Some of the Malayalam films and some films from northeast, you know, which are very rare to film. So I would give a priority, and this would be like the whole idea of Antar Bharti, you know. The, Indian language films, I think, I wish there were more of these. And uh, because otherwise, if you, unless you go to a festival or unless you go to an Indian panorama section, you don't get to really uh, see those films. And they are also in competition with others. Now, by themselves, if these films are coming, I think I'm, that's something to be very happy about. And I think, uh, I hope it comes to stay, even when normalcy, whatever that is, will resume. This particular feature, I think, uh, should continue. Yeah, that's all. I also quite agree with that. You know, the online festival is giving us a great opportunity to kind of, you know, update ourselves with what is happening around the world, around India, around you know, my neighboring states and things like that. We are not only get, you know, getting acquainted with the new film, but also we are getting acquainted with what is happening to us in the civilization as such. Hello. How each society, you know, how each society is reacting to that, because these things uh, mirror to that those expressions. So, I have, I, I have just I one son person. Yeah, sorry. Kasarole uh, Okay. Pradeep. Yeah. Kasarole, sir. Nana Prasna Ingi Taste and the new Ide cinema Madwek and then prescription Madi Dalla. But Nima Idi anthology and the filmography and a nodidre. Bosha new Gatashrad Dinda Hidudu Mone Monea Konima Konia cinema the Rege. New contemporary society matu contemporary politics and visual. Medium na mulaka it kondu at other mulaka react Martha Bandi. For example, Nima Mane Sin Maide. Baradal Bosha Yaru globalization bagge prastapa Marde Ruanta Sandar Budal Motta Modulu Nivadana Adit and Takundu to Atient Adbutwa Sin Mamadi. Komu Adut Bagge communalism mele new globita kisanta Sin Mamadi. Mahi At the Idi Muslim Mahele identity prasne bandaga Hasina Madi. Nanadu on the Kala Kalake Samakalina Rajukia Samajika. Uh, Sangatiana, new Adyatiana Takunda, new uh, cinema, uh, cinema, uh, Nirupana, and Agi, Adrali Mad Korta Hogidri. Agirwaga, Karnatkama to Barthadanta Samadali, Jati, Tumba Mukhevada, Tumba Integral Lada, and Anubava, especially the Lil Prashnakura, Tumba Integral Lada, and Anubava. Ananke Mukheva Girodan, Nimke Eli could under uh, Tumba Yake, Sorpa, either a treat Madbeku and Labandi Lanthe, Yasta Bitra Mate, it could I must say. Thank you. But uh, <coughs> it talks about the Dalit narrative as such. Because for example, the Kannadali, Kannadali, Mane Madevana, Kannadali, coming to the foreground. And that's when, you know, uh, that's why I find, I feel my film. Spreading the Stalin of dream. Very important. Yeah, I think, uh, uh, sorry, I'll just uh, take one last question. Uh, 
Navin Kelvin Dalmia, are you here? Navin Kelvin Dalmia, please go ahead and ask your question. Yes, thank you. Uh, my question is open to the panel itself, and I'd firstly like to thank uh, for such an invigorating uh, discussion to have occurred. My question is about whether the perhaps the mediocre, uh, mediocre content in the to populism in politics, wherein uh, if one does not subscribe to the mainstream narrative or the main ideology, that becomes an act of isolation. So can a correlation ha happen there where isolation is not being able to be popular or be in the know of things? Could, could that be correlated? Oh, so yeah, I, I just have a quick reaction. Actually, uh, many of the when you talk about the mainstream and big budget films, quite often you see the characters which are played by the stars, or mainly the vehicle star vehicles. You know, these days they have become unfortunately far more than that they were earlier. So it's uh, what the stars going to you know what you remember. You remember that particular star playing that kind of role, and not so much. It's not so much about the issue or so much about the uh, this thing, barring exceptions, of course. Most of the time, so the whole thing is structured as to prop up, you know, the person at the star. Or the only difference is that this star has done something else, you know, which is not done before. So the fan goal is supposed to go and be loyal and uh, avoid that film. You know, that's how uh, it is sometimes quite often reduced to. You know? That is an unfortunate part of it because the whole issue again becomes centered on the major and how bigger the star, less risk, you know, is taken, and that's where the it becomes very star-oriented rather than a subject or a theme-oriented. Now, mind you, stars are important. Actors are unique in various places. There's no second kind of opinion or argument on that. But to what extent they dominate and what extent one comes to sort of tell the story, that's something that we have to understand when we talk, talking about the mainstream. Uh, yes. Of course, we have a couple of more uh, interesting questions, but I think uh, we have I had a, quite a long session. Uh, I think um, I'm really thrilled to have Anil Zankar sir and Girish Kasuri sir both on this session. Uh, of course, it's an interesting topic and a very contemporary topic, a lot to discuss. But uh, thank you so much for uh, both of your time. And uh, it's been really a pleasure talking to both of you and uh, to listen to all the audience questions and discussion. So I thank Girish Kasuri sir for this uh, opportunity, Anil Zankar sir for your time. And uh, all the audience who have participated in this session, um, and um, uh, Saint Aloysius College Evening College, to giving this, giving us this opportunity to organize this, and uh, all the members of Sanchi Foundation uh, who have helped us uh, prepare this. Uh, so thank, you, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you all thank you. from my side, also the audience, the organizers, Amay, Girish, speak. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah. Waiting this man. Waiting this man. Waiting for this man.